We're here in Midland for the first game of a four-game series with the Rockhounds, and we're joined by starting pitcher Kevin Pesetas, who pitched well, got the win the other night. Uh, Kevin, you have been a decision machine this year. Every start you've made, you've been able to pick up the win or uh, been given the loss. Uh, you, you've only, I think, had one no decision this season. You're always right in the middle of it. Yeah, it's uh, kind of funny how that works. Um, I take a lot of pride in, you know, being around and getting those decisions, you know, going deep in the games. I've done a pretty good job of that, you know, aside of a few games, but... Uh, that's what I like to do is eat a lot of innings. And uh, I've just been very fortunate, you know, to get those decisions, you know, even, you know, on the loss side. Evaluate how you did the other night. I think uh, you pitched really well, especially after the first inning. A couple things go against you. Three hits, two of them really might have been uh, able to be prevented, but uh, really a fine job after that. Well, you know, I did a good job of making pitches. Uh, I've been working hard with Jeff Andrews, you know, on the side. Uh, you know, just trying to tweak some little things, trying to get uh, some separation between my curveball and my slider a little bit more. And uh, that started, you know, kind of coming into play that last outing. Uh, did a good job making pitches when I had to when those guys got on base, you know, after a couple little flare jobs, you know, a couple dribbling ground balls here and there, you know, were tough plays. And, uh, you know, the only thing I was really upset about the way I threw was uh, that homer that I gave up there in the sixth after us uh, taking the lead, you know, going up uh, two to one there, you know, and. And that kind of hurt a little bit, but I was able to rebound and get through the inning, and we wound up coming back and getting on top at the bottom of that inning. You've had now 10, 11 starts under your belt. How are you feeling physically at this point in the season? Because that can be a big part of it. Uh, I, I feel like uh, my last couple of outings, uh, you know, that coming out of the pen for those rehab guys coming down, you know, Colby Lewis and uh, – and uh, Gondo, you know, kind of helped me uh, get a little bit of a breather and get those legs back underneath me a little bit. And uh, I felt I felt really good, you know. And like I said earlier, that's what I take pride in is eating those innings and being a durable guy that can take that ball every fifth day. And, and I'm feeling good. But uh, those couple days, you know, right around the All-Star break, you know, and this nice long homestand we got leading into that will certainly help out with the, with the legs and the arms and the back. <laughs> It'll help physically, but also help mentally, too, uh, give you a couple of days away from it. In your experience, and you've been around a while, what is the tougher part as a pitcher, the, the mental side or the physical side, just staying healthy and being able to stay strong? Well, I think if the mental side is straight, the physical side will kind of take care of itself. You know, it, it's tough, you know, grinding, you know, at this level and, you know, in some of these uh, tough environments we have to play in, you know, as far that aren't too pitcher friendly. You know, Frisco certainly isn't. <laughs> hasn't been the most friendly uh facility you know to pitch at this year you know a lot of very aggressive wind going out you know so that's a tough part to pitch in and I think if you can keep it together mentally you know and just concentrate on taking it pitch by pitch outing by outing I think the the physical part kind of just you know follows follows suit to that. You had a bullpen earlier today uh, this is probably the 100th or 200, 300 millionth bullpen session you've ever been through. Uh, seeing is that you're not really learning as much about yourself in these situations, like some of the younger guys, like maybe a McBride. What do you work on in these bullpen sessions with Jeff? I'm constantly fine-tuning things. Uh, you know, Jeff, Jeff's really been good for me. Uh, he, he knows a lot about uh, how to help guys kind of take that next step in their career. And, you know, I think – that I'm constantly looking for that little separator to kind of, you know, put me over the top, you know, to help me get to that next level. And all of us are trying to get to that next level. But uh, I, I think uh, just those little refinements for me are, are going to be key in helping me uh, be able to string together some more solid outings, you know, win some more ball games, And, and that's definitely what I've been working on, and that's what I'm going to keep working on. Give me an example of what are the things that specifically that he tries to help you with in, in one of those sessions. Uh, sometimes I get a little bit too aggressive uh, in my delivery, trying to get out and get to home plate a little bit too fast. Uh, I'm very good at holding runners, and sometimes that's kind of my uh, my Achilles heel. You know, I, I want to get that ball home so quick because you know we've got two pretty good catchers that can get the ball down to second base really good, and sometimes that helps me uh, or that gets me out of my delivery a little bit. I get a little quick and a little tippy, a little fast, uh, you know, and getting that ball to home plate and I kind of force the issue a little bit instead of being over the back of the rubber, you know, head, shoulders, everything back behind the arm and, you know, trying to drive that ball down. And that's kind of been my Achilles heel over the last couple of years is just being a little bit too quick and a little bit too over anxious to get that ball home. When you're out there on the mound, I've noticed all season long you're a bit fidgety out there. You know, hands are always moving. You probably don't even notice it, but has that just always been a part of you to feel loose, or is it just something you don't even think about? <laughs> it's funny you say that. I've had a couple, you know, managers say that to me, and 
they think it's because you know my, my pace is pretty fast you know I, I'm a pretty quick worker and I mean I've even had some <laughs> some coaches be like man I don't know how you can throw a ball every five seconds you know but <laughs> if there's anybody can do it it's you know it's you and and I if you ever notice me sitting down I my knee is always going my hands always going it's just I don't I don't know I, I can't <laughs> I'm a heck of a coffee drinker I'll tell you that <laughs> I don't know if that has anything to do with it but uh uh, it's interesting you say that. Probably part of the reason why, at least. <laughs> Maybe. You're a, uh, you're a big-time hunter. You're showing me some pictures of your, your recent hunting escapades. Uh, has that always been something that you've done uh, growing up in South Carolina? Uh, I've always hunted. Uh, I've gotten really into bow hunting, uh, you know, the compound bow, probably over the last three or four years, you know, really hot and heavy. I mean, I, I'm really into it. Uh, you know, it's just a very nice day to or a very nice way to uh, spend a lot of time in that winter. You know, uh, it's really peaceful, very serene, and I kind of use it to, uh, you know, get away from things a little bit. Uh, it, it's just, it's kind of therapeutic for me. And, uh, you know, I've been blessed to have some friends here close by to uh, to take me out getting some feral, some wild feral hogs and uh, to be able to help these Texan farmers out with those, keep them out their lands and everything. So that's actually been, you know, a nice little uh, therapeutic way to get away from baseball a little bit. And like you said earlier, that that mentality is, you know, anytime you can take a, uh, a day to kind of get your mind off things that are happening on the baseball field is certainly beneficial. I'm putting you on the spot here, but do you have a, an all-time favorite hunting story? Uh, this past one I had on my uh, on my off days, I mean, it's up there. You know, I, I killed a 300-pound feral hog, you know, which is – was just about 10 pounds off the North Texas record, you know, which was which was really cool. And anytime you hunt a new animal, it's just uh, it's just a completely different kind of high and excitement. I mean, basically all I have in South Carolina is whitetail and uh, and turkey, and that's basically you know all I've done. And the occasional waterfowl, you know, but that really doesn't do it for me as much as uh, you know hunting stuff with a bow. But to take an animal of that size with a bow and arrow, you know, is certainly really special and. I can't wait to see that thing when I get it back from the taxidermist. It's definitely going on the wall, so that'll be a nice little uh, memento for me for uh, my time here in Texas. And the Texas farmers, yes, are, are very happy you took that <laughs> off their hands. Kevin, thanks so much for the time. Congratulations on the nice outing the other day, and we look forward to seeing many more here throughout the summer. Okay, appreciate it, Alex. Thank you. It's Kevin Pesetis. We're back after this on the Frisco Rough Riders Baseball Network.